We all know it is a good thing to pray for others, but why? What do we receive from praying for others? Let's go to the book of Job real quick. I will not put it in any order, but I'm going to read this. First Tim, actually, let's go. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. First Timothy 2 verse 1. Uh-huh. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. One more time. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Notice what Paul is saying here. I exhort, therefore, I am encouraging you, therefore, that first learn to make supplications for others, different kind of prayers for others, intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. Meaning that as a child of God, there are different kind of prayers. All prayers are not made equal. And every kind of prayer is for a specific thing. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. We have supplications. We have prayers. We have intercessions. And we have giving of thanks. How many of you have ever supplicated for others? If I ask many of you what is supplication, majority will not know what supplicating is. Some won't even know the place of intercession. Where do we intercede? Because many think if we are praying for others, we are interceding for others. That's not what intercession is. When it says prayers, it is generalizing different types of prayers within prayers. Because supplication is a form of prayer. Intercession is a form of prayer. But there is also a prayer called prayers. And then there is giving of thanks. So all these are different. But I am not going to break them down today. I may do that another time. But you are being exhorted. You are being encouraged. Guys, I encourage you to do this. What is the first reason why you should do this? This is not in any particular order. Job chapter 42 verse 10. Job 42 and 10. Job 42 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Read it again. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. One more time. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Stop right there. Let me explain to you the concept of praying for others first. The kingdom of God is about serving others. Many have limited serving God to only going to church, cleaning, setting up. Yes, that is serving God. But you need to also serve your fellow man. You need to assist them spiritually. Why is it paramount to do that? Because number one, the principle of the kingdom is to serve. Now for every service, 
for every service, there is always a reward attached to it. Many of you don't understand for whatever seed you sow, you will what? Reap. This principle is not just with money. It goes even into spiritual things. Praying for others. Job was delivered by God from the hand of the enemy. Not only because he recognized his wrong before God. But God turned his captivity when he prayed for his fellow friend's captivity. His friends had offended God by looking at Job and saying, you sinned against God. Repent, Job. You messed up before God. God said, how did you guys interfere between me and Job? God cursed them. And God spoke to his friends. You guys need to go and repent before Job. And he will pray for you. And then I will take my anger from you. But God had already spoken this to them. But Job was not delivered until he started praying for God's anger against his friend to be taken away. He got on his knees, started praying, Father, have mercy on them. They didn't know. They didn't know any better. They didn't understand any better. Immediately, Job's situation turned around. And even the wealth that he had lost was increased. You see, some of you are praying, Father, bless me. Increase me financially. Father, I pray for a new job. Father, pray for somebody that has no job. Pray for somebody that is suffering. God will look at you and say, wow. You are suffering, but you are thinking of another above yourself, I will turn your situation. You have to understand the loopholes of the spirit. If I have been praying for something and I'm not seeing any movement, I need to consider, hmm, is there another way for me to get what I want? You see, Jacob was wise enough he understood the promise was with his older brother. Let me find a way to get this blessing. One day he's cooking soup. His brother is hungry. His brother comes to him. He says, give me some soup. He said, no. If you give, if you give up your birthright, I will give you the soup. He said, I don't care about this birthright. You can have it. This is the reason why when Jacob went into his father, Spiritual, physically, the Bible says the father said, the voice is of Jacob, but the body is not. The father picked up spiritually the spirit of Esau, but the voice of Jacob. So he based his release of the blessing based on the spiritual, not the physical. He found a loophole into the blessing. Many of you are not wise enough. You keep doing what we call insanity, not the exercise. You are not wise enough to sit down and to consider ways. Many of you are suffering because you don't understand the quickest way to the blessing is serving others. You see, you can be a born again Christian, but in God's eyes, you're selfish. Many of you have never taken time to pray for others in, unless they brought a prayer request to you. You have just never looked around you and you saw somebody, hey, they've been in need for this for a long time. I'm going to take three days to fast and pray for them. I wouldn't even tell them that I'm praying for them. But I will pray to my God to see them through. You lock yourself up, oh Father. Remember them. Remember them, Father. Whatever they may have done wrong, have mercy, Lord. Lord, consider their request. Consider their suffering. This is why so many of you are stagnant. 
you have never served anybody else except yourself. Every prayer you have is about you. Father, I want more anointing. Father, I want more Holy Spirit. Father, I want more finances. Father, expand me, increase me. It has, you have never prayed a prayer outside of you. And if you pray for others, you don't even pray for others wholeheartedly. You pray for others half-heartedly and for yourself is when you go in shadabadabakatabaka for, you, for them. Oh, Father, bless them, Father. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. As if yes, Lord is a prayer. We don't even know who you are agreeing with. Mm. Pray for them. Yes, Lord. You can do it, Father. Oh, Master, do it now. Yet the king of glory showed us the best example. He was on the cross. The people who are persecuting him. The people who are hurting him. The people who are fighting him. The people who are opposing him. The people who are mocking him. They are insulting him. And Jesus is looking to heaven saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. This is why Jesus' name was glorified, lifted up, because he was faithful to his call of serving others. He says he took upon himself the form of a servant. Jesus did not come on earth to just die. Jesus came on earth to serve. He said, look, the servant is not greater than the master, yet I came to serve you. You should serve others. Don't desire positions. Desire to be a servant. Desire to be a servant. Cry the cry of being a servant. You have never prayed for, you only pray for the things that matter to you. Oh, Father, bless my children because you are attached to them. But you have never taken time to pray for other people's children. Father, bless me so that I can be a blessing. When did you ever pray, Father, bless that woman so that one day she can build orphanages and bless others, not you, others. Look at others and see their calling bigger than yourself that they will be more useful for the kingdom of God than you. You see, many of you just want to be the main person. You see, many times, let me say it this way. Many times, people mistake my confidence for my calling for pride. No, I'm extremely confident in my calling. Trust me. I know where God called me from. I, and I will never repent for that. I am extremely confident in it. I am 100% sold to it. I know my place in Christ. And I also know when God calls me, I know exactly where I'm going. I am not worried about others or what people think because I know exactly my mission. I am not here to police others. I don't care what others are doing. What that pastor, that evangelist, that prophet, that prophetess, that bishop, none of my business. I know exactly what God sent me to do. I am sold to that cause. And that cause is not for me to be glorified. That cause is for me to serve the people of God so that one day when my time is up, they will do even better than I did because without me investing myself in others to be better, I have failed. I have a million percent failed. A hundred million percent failed. A hundred million percent failed. My desire, my burning desire is that everyone I encounter to do greater, better exploits in Christ Jesus more than me. Don't be like me. Be way better than me. 
surpass me. Let me even be forgotten because of how great God will use you. But let God remember me. That is my desire. When you don't understand that to serve others makes you great in the kingdom of God, you will never see the importance of serving others. Number one, many of you are in captivity because you've never prayed for others. Let me give you a simple example. Was Moses a slave? No. Nope. Moses had never been a slave. He was, a, he was a, a, a man born of the Hebrew slaves. But him himself, he was not a slave. He grew up in the palace. Even when he was kicked out of Egypt, he lived with Jethro and his family. He was being a shepherd. He was a free man. He was married. He had a child. He had found peace. Then God comes and tells him, I have heard the cry of my people. Now you are the one who's going to go and set them free. How did these people become my problem now? <laughs> but if you read about Moses, you realize because Moses gave up his life for a nation. Moses is no longer even a prophet. He is more than a prophet. The Bible says, Moses and the prophets. He outgrew the level of prophets because he gave his life. The Bible says this. God told Moses this. He said, I will make you God unto Aaron and Aaron shall be a prophet unto you. That is why in the Bible it never says prophet Moses. It just says Moses because he is beyond a prophet because God even said, Moses is not a prophet. He said, if they be a prophet among you, I will speak to them in visions and in dreams and in dark speeches, but not my friend Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, mouth to mouth. Even the appearance of God shall he behold. Do you know why? He chose to be a servant. He sacrificed himself for others. It was never about him. It was never about him. It was about the nation. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, not for him, for the nation. He spent hours in the presence of God, not for him, to receive instructions to lead a nation. Stubborn people, stiff-necked people, he cried for mercy in the presence of God for them. That is what made Moses great. The scripture said this. Now Moses was the most humble man on the face of the earth. If you look at the mannerisms of Moses, you start realizing they are very similar to the Lord Jesus. The Bible says and Jesus was made of no reputation. Zero reputation. Moses, as great as he was, he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. And his meekness was in serving. He didn't have time to condemn others. He only had time to lead them to God. He only had time to direct them to God. He never stepped out of the bounds of his calling. Listen to me, children of God. There is power in serving others spiritually. When was the last time you prayed for your parents? You want long life, but you're not praying for long life for your parents. Do unto others. Let me, let me explain to you something. At your time of need, your prayer doesn't matter. What you did for others matter. This is something a lot of believers don't know. Work while it is still day. For night cometh. Nobody can work. In your darkest hour, praying is difficult. 
seeking God is difficult. You may not even have the peace, the calm. But when God looks at you and remembers what you did for others, God will rescue you. What I'm simply trying to explain to you is this. Seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. The righteousness that we are talking about, seeking the kingdom of God is finding Jesus. And all its righteousness, the ways of the kingdom, the primary way of the kingdom is to serve. Giving you money takes two seconds. To get on my knees to pray for you takes love. I can give you something and I don't care. Is somebody listening? Let me explain to you what it means to be great in spirit. Before I read the verse I wanted to read. Now, let me explain to you a very deep uh, spiritual truth. Number one, listen to me carefully, children of God. We are all the same in God's eyes. But we are not ranked the same. I'll say that again. In the eyes of God through Christ, we are all his children. So we are the same. But just like in a family, children born of the same womb don't all come out the same. Your father and mother will love you all because you are his children, but in reality, they know who is exception and who is not. Let's just keep it real. Let's just be fair. Can I be real? It's the truth. Their kids will be favored more. Their parents will try all they can to hide it. I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> let, let me just give you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay, let me give you an example. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Right? Jesus is our righteousness, right? The Bible is saying the prayer of the righteous availeth much. If we both pray for something right now, who will God answer first? Are you listening to me? You need to ask yourself, no, I'm not even talking about me here. I'm just saying that this is a reality you have to consider. There is a reason why you went to Peter. There is a reason why you went to Paul. There is a reason why you went to find John the Baptist. There is a reason why you needed Elijah. There is a reason why you needed Elisha. There is a reason why you needed Moses. Now we are all his children. Israel is his people. He is their God. But God is listening to others more than others. Anybody who tells you that we are the same, they lied to you. We are not. God looks at Jacob's, he looks at uh, 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 Isaac and his kids. And he says, Jacob I love, Esau I hate. Ah, Esau never did anything. He's still in the mother's womb. God is saying, this guy, I don't like him. God has favorites. <laughs> God has favorites. God has favorites. It's not me, this is God. But affection can be built. It is not a steady thing. It can be built. If I understand what pleases God, I can turn God's attention to me because I am doing what pleases him. So I can grow my relationship with God beyond where it naturally is. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, People say God has no favorite. John chapter 1. Go to John chapter 1. You know God has favorites. 
Jesus is a human being. This is my beloved son. I don't care about all of you. This one. <laughs> and you're saying we are all the same. No, we are not. Jesus comes out and said, of all men born of a woman, none is greater than John. So God is making others great and others not. We are not the same people. But whatever place you are, you can grow in greatness because spiritual potency, spiritual strength doesn't come because you fast and pray. I was on, uh, I was on TikTok upstairs. Just Sometimes I just swipe through to look. <laughs> I stumbled on this page and it was this. Uh, I won't mention his name. Is this prophet? <laughs> the man DM'd me. He told me, prophet, wow. It was such a privilege to, 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 to see you and what God is doing with you. Wow. It is just incredible. God is great. I said, amen. May God grant you all your desires and may God lift you. Today I'm going through <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> I see him live, so I click on it to just see. He says, oh, I see there's a prophet here. There's a prophet here. <laughs> prophet, listen to me. I see you global, like a global man of God. Oh, prophet, I need you to respond to me. Respond to me. Are you serious? <laughs> I see a lot of white people around you. Oh. You are not... Prophet, you're not responding to me. You're not responding to me. So I will move on. I will move on. I, I, just, I just laughed. I said, look at these people. That's why God can't make you great. You DM me secretly. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see, it would be different if you have never seen me anything. You DM'd me. I had a conversation with you. We spoke. I even also blessed you. Wow. But you see, all this is because people want a certain appearance of greatness. Yeah. But they don't understand true spiritual greatness begins by humility and service to others. Yeah. When you begin to serve others, your spiritual capacity is increased. Many of you may be prophets that are watching me. You may be an evangelist that is watching me. You may be a pastor that is watching me. The prophetic ministry does not work unless you become somebody that serves others. Because your calling is not for you to flex how great you are. How gifted you are. Your gift should shine through giving people life and through serving them. That is where your gifting should really shine. That is where your gifting should shine. You see... Christians, if you cannot take time, listen, I can make a mistake. You can make a mistake. No one is beyond mistakes. Nobody is beyond any mistake. Therefore, what does that mean? It means that because I am also able to make mistakes, there are sins I may commit in God's eyes that I am unaware of. But if I showed mercy to others and prayed for others, then God will spare me at my lowest time and God will show me mercy. Blessed are those who show mercy for they shall reap what? Mercy. Mercy. 
I always see this with Christians and I always laugh because most of these people can't see anything. But they always want to find you in error. If you see, criticize, the ability to critique is actually a spiritual gift. Because it makes you analytical. Not everybody is an analytical. So the ability to be analytical is actually spiritual. It means that you can see things clearly, right? Yeah. That gift should start with you. That's good. <laughs> it was not given for others. It was given for you. The moment you can assess yourself and see yourself, you will change how you deal with people. A hundred percent. You see, Moses was meek. Moses was humble. Because he had seen God. He understood. The way you deal with the people of God is not this way. You have to be more like this. Because he had been in the presence of God. Many of us here, we are like, you remember those old movies where if they found a witch, they torch the whole, they go with torches to take them. That's how Christians behave. If I see, the Bible says, love covers a multitude of sin. If I truly have the love of Christ in me, and I see Apostle John messing up, I see Charles messing up. I will go on my knees and pray for them and say, Father, you have called them for a great calling. I saw them error like this. If I am wrong, also forgive me. But if that thing is really there, Father, help them. Have mercy on them. Strengthen them. Anoint them. But Christians will be quick to call you all manner of names to discredit you. And they'll say, go and repent. The Bible says, Whomsoever you shall forgive their sins, they shall be forgiven. So if I see you in sin, I should pray on your behalf that God not only will forgive you, but God will strengthen you so that you can continue to be a benefit for the kingdom. This is why you should pray for others because every act, every single act, is reversed unto you. Every act is given back unto you. Listen to me. I will never be broke. It is impossible for me to be broke. A hundred percent impossible. A lot of people will think, oh, because he gets paid from church. Nope. I have a lot of other things I do. But I will tell you this. My sacrifice to the kingdom of God, to the lives of people, how many people God has given me the grace to pay for their school, take people through school, pay rent for people, put people through hospitals, even, uh, even buying land for people. Rebuilding people's homes. Ah, God will never allow, even if I go, those who will come from me can never suffer. It is impossible. Hiding treasures in heaven is not just giving to church. It's serving those who are in need. Praying for those who are in need. Jesus said, if you find somebody cold, take off a coat and cover them. Don't say, God bless you. He said, that's nonsense. I'm going to read just one more verse. Are you here still? Yes. Hola, brother Bashaka. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Did you get it? Yes. Okay. Ephesians 6, 18. Yes. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit 
and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Mm. One more time. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Notice, and there are prayers that are done physically and there are prayers that are done in the Spirit. Amen. There is supplication done in the Spirit. There are prayers done in the Spirit. Watching with all perseverance. Mm -hmm. Do you know why I'm prophetically sharp? Because I'm always praying for others. You know, I don't remember the day I prayed for myself. My prayer to God for me is usually, Lord, be merciful to me. Forgive me where I have erred. I want to know you more. I want to get close to you majority of my prayer is father i pray for the church i pray for that person make me useful for your glory i spend more time to be more useful for his glory than for myself an example auntie benz what time did we leave the house what time did i wake up i was up by five something yeah but I, my first workout was at 7.30. 7.30. We left the house by 8.15. Yeah. Uh, I went to my second workout. After that, I was done around 10. Yeah. And from there, I've been in church working and serving for the people of God. Yeah. And then I'll go home to be with my son whose birthday is tomorrow. Yeah. Look at all that time. Not doing anything for me. <laughs> Uncle Charles, we went and picked up Uncle Charles and came with him. Yeah. God increases. You see, when people say, Father, in the name of Jesus, increase my capacity. If your capacity is just for you, God won't increase it. You don't pray, increase my capacity. Serve others, it will force God to increase your capacity. I want you to go and give to God. The Lord is calling each and every one of you. Tonight, pray for those who have offended you. Pray for those who have betrayed you. Pray for those who have let you down. If you want true elevation, if you desire the power and the anointing from God, your heart must be pure. It must be pure enough that if God calls you to pray for those who are against you, you will do it with love. If God was to bring up those people who insulted you, that you will pray for them with love. God is challenging you today. Not to just forgive, but pray for the best for their lives and thank God also for their lives. Don't pray for them based on your experience, but pray for them based on the heart of God concerning them. Listen to me. As you do this, going to this next month, you will see the miracles that will follow you. You will see the mighty hand of God that will manifest on your behalf. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you that it is done unto us. We thank you that your grace and mercy is upon us and that you have stretched your hands to carry us and to lift us. Glory and honor belongs to you, our Lord and our Father. Father, we thank you for this word that we will put it to action. That the way of the kingdom is to serve. May all glory and honor come back to you. Because you are the only one who deserves it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Listen.